Weird one for the Amherst. Devin Levi was incredible, but they lose the game. I got a lot to say on Devin Levi in a very positive manner. Coming up here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Monopoly Go. Game off. We got to talk about Monopoly Go. This fast-paced game lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on Google Play or the App Store Game on. Sneaky Joe DiBiase on the Locked on Sabres podcast. The Amherst fall in double overtime to the Syracuse Crunch, but I have got for you today why I am feeling awesome about what happened in the Amherst game last night, and it is centered around one individual, and that is Devin Levi. 60 saves on 62 shots against an all-time level performance in the AHL for the Amherst, despite the fact that it came in a losing effort. We'll talk about Levi, some of the numbers on Levi, and my overall theorem on Levi, which is if one year ago today you thought this guy, after the best college seat career we had ever seen, and then almost willing the Sabres to the playoffs in seven games at the end of last season, if you thought Levi was on his way to being a star-level goaltender, my goal today is to convince you that that opinion should be reinforced today, not doubted after the season that he has just had. So we'll get to that. And also the impact on Uka Pekka Lukanen. Not for next season. Lukanen's going to go into next season as the starting goaltender. But does Levi's season impact their decision on Lukanen's contract. I will also explain why I think that it should to some degree. So all of that is coming up, but, and also, you know, good thing we got our Leafs trade episode out of the way because it's very possible they win now. They win game six, two to one. Boston did not show up at the beginning of that game. They were outshot 12 to one in the first period. They got it back together a little bit, but they fall Two to one, and the Bruins scored their one goal with 0.1 seconds left, so it almost doesn't even count. They go back to Boston for game seven. And the idea of a Leafs blow up, I mean, was kind of reliant on them falling in the first round. I don't think that changes if they lose game seven. I mean, had they lost in game five, you know, it would be more anger in Toronto. But to me, them going to Boston and losing tomorrow night, Saturday night at eight o'clock has the same type of impact in terms of do they blow it up? Do they trade Marner? Do they look to trade Nylander? Marner, to me, is still the more likely one. Uh, I don't think that changes if they lose to the Bruins. But they've won back-to-back games. They've won back-to-back games without Austin Matthews. They've dominated the Bruins. Shot attempts, puck possession. The Bruins haven't showed up, in my opinion, the last two games. And they better wake up for game number seven especially if Matthews comes back into the lineup. The Leafs are already playing well. Um, We'll see what we get. Uh, In terms of the Amherst playoffs, they lose 2-1. to And kind of like how the Bruins got run over, they got outshot 12-1. to The Bruins did in period one last night. The Amherst got outshot 21-3 to in the first period. It was, I saw an AHL record or, or an AHL record, like since 2000, something along those lines, the most saves in a period was Devin Levi in that first period. He turned away 21 shots in the first period. That's a game's worth of work in period. Number one, he kept them in that game, the whole big saves, and the Amherst kind of were asleep. They got it together, kind of like the Bruins did a little bit in the second and the third period. They had a 2 on 0 in overtime that absolutely should have put the game away. Mason Jops got a one-timer. They went give and go, which I do like on a 2 on 0 but the second pass was in Jops' feet, uh, and he wasn't able to pull, dig it out of there and put it into the back of the net. So they had some chances. They played 
almost, I mean, they played more than four whole periods of hockey and they didn't score a single goal in live action. They scored only goal was Isaac Roseanne on a penalty shot. And it was a great goal by Roseanne. He comes in, he goes uh, kind of backhand, forehand, but on the right side, roofs it over the shoulder of the goaltender. It was a great goal by him. He's had a really nice series. And I want to talk about him definitely this offseason because I think he's probably got to be in the NHL next year. He's already played two full seasons in the AHL. I don't know what benefits him playing in the AHL again. Either call him up, play him in your bottom six, or trade him. But in this game, he scores that goal. That's all they got. So that's a couple games in a row where the Amherst have been pretty well dominated, controlled by Syracuse. And if they want to send this back to Rochester for a game number five to go to the second round, they are going to have to play 10 times better than they have. Um, so that's where the Amherst are at. Levi, though, stole the show. Completely, completely stole the show. In this game, he was tracking the puck so well. The only two goals that he gave up, one was a puck that slid to the left, and he actually had come out to shove a guy from the front of his own net, and the puck kind of timed with that. So he was a little bit out of position, and the puck slides to the perfect guy at the worst time, and he's able to put it over Levi's shoulder. Levi complained to the ref, but it definitely wasn't you know contact that was worthy of taking that goal down. And the other goal he let up was a breakaway in double overtime. So every single shot, where he had the vision or he was able to square up to, he saved. And this dude, I had one texter, reminder, our text line, always available to you. If you would like to chime in, my, your observations about the Amherst or get some updates along the way, and you're not a, you're not signed up already, you could do that. Go to joinsubtext.com slash lockdown savers. One texter texted in that, that Levi kind of reminds him of Marc-Andre Fleury. And I really like that. Fleury was bigger. They're also, by the way, from maybe not the same hometown, but around the same place, uh, hometown. But anyways, the movements, the fluidity of Levi does really remind you of Fleury. I mean, there are saves in this game where he is full split along the ice, but while his legs are spread out, like he's moving back and forth, like he's doing a dance. Like he is just, he's moving so well. It, he moves at, it's such a crazy level. It's what allows him to be a great goaltender because we know the size doesn't do it. He's just so fun to watch. It really makes him fun to watch. All of his saves are highlight reel saves, the big ones, um, but always out challenging, always playing his angles well. He tracks pucks extremely well. He's always digging through screens and finding where the puck's coming from. This game alone, Levi was unbelievable. And he, again, was the only reason the Amherst didn't get blown out in this game and it's another he's at now a 940 save percentage in the playoffs which is unbelievable it's another step for Levi in showing the level of prospect he is I think if you thought a year ago this guy's got star potential he is special don't let this season discourage you. I think this season should encourage you. I'll explain when we come back on Levi here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. We are presented here on the show by Monopoly Go. I am an uber competitive person. When I was a kid, me and my brother would literally punch each other uh, if we were playing football or hockey and we didn't win. We were psycho competitors. Well, to feed my competitive side, Got to have Monopoly Go. It definitely helps out. We got to pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much more to get. Unique stickers. You can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure and more. And there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and go download it now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on with Monopoly Go. 
Back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast, it can be us your first listen every day. Be sure to check out Locked On Sports today. If you are sick of all that shouting on those early debate shows for ESPN or Fox Sports, got to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Switch over to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. It's available always streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So Devin Levi, 60 saves in an Amherst loss. They now trail 2-1 to one in a best of five against Syracuse. Levi is having a special season. I know it might not feel like that, and that is because of where expectations were. Expectations for Devin Levi were historic. And in a way, that's fair. It's kind of tough to ask, but it's fair. Why was it fair to ask for historically good for him? He was historically good in college. Simply put, he was arguably the greatest college goalie we have ever seen. So the hype was through the roof. And then he showed up in seven games last year, and he doubled down on that, said, I'm worth it. So this year shows up, and it's, is he going to play 45 games? 50 games, maybe even more than that, is he going to be, I mean, he was thought of as the number one reason that they're going to go from 91 points, missing the playoffs by one point, to making it was this kid. It was Levi. He was the number one reason Sabre fans thought they were going to take a step and end the playoff drought. So with those level of expectations, it feels like he fell short because he didn't play in the NHL a lot this year. Levi, in total, gets 21 starts. 21 starts. And Lukanen steals the show. Lukanen was unbelievable. Crazy good development. Number one goaltender. Vesna level numbers from January on. He stole the show. But Levi was set at historic precedent. Be historically good. No 22-year-old goaltender with no NHL experience or AHL experience has showed up and been that good right away. Like, it, it very twice every 10 years, maybe it almost never, ever happens. So what does Levi do? He plays 21 games. Lucan and seals the show. He goes down to Rochester. Well, let's start with his 21 games in Buffalo before we get to Rochester. Levi has an 899 safe percentage, a 10, eight and two record. So about 500 above 500 by NHL standards. And a quality start percentage of 47.6%. All right, so on the surface, you go to his hockey reference page, and what do you see? Not that good. Nothing great. Below 900 is generally not thought of as very good at all. I thought there were some troubling periods early on, and maybe it stemmed from an injury. He, as much as Tage Thompson has an injury excuse, or Dylan Cousins has an injury excuse, maybe you have to include Levi. Levi... Definitely got hurt in that Calgary game very early on in the year. I remember seeing it when I was there that he, during a TV timeout, kind of pulled up and looked uncomfortable. And then sure enough, he did finish that game, missed time after that. Was he the same after? Did he come back early? Was he fully healthy when he came back? I mean, I think you should be able to wonder as much about that with him as you do about the other guys. But even I don't even need that. I don't even need the injury excuse. Because his numbers are better than that 899 save percentage says. And it's going to depend how much better for the advanced stats, depending on where you look. So moneypuck.com, for instance. And a lot of the numbers, guys, a lot of times will say about moneypuck that they do some weird stuff. Like maybe they overinflate the quality of opponent into their numbers. They They do a little bit of stuff that's a little different than everybody else. But I'll share what Money Puck has, and then I'll give you what Evolving Hockey does, which is a little bit more of the standard for the numbers, guys. Money Puck had Devin Levi in goals saved above expected per 60 minutes. You got to go per 60 minutes. It's always going to give you a more accurate reading and efficiency, not just the volume. Where did he rank among 70 goaltenders? Where did he rank? Fifth. Goalies to play 20 or more games. He was number Five, elite, elite level. Then I go to his evolving hockey page and I'll share that on our YouTube channel. Of course, you can always check us out on YouTube if you are so inclined and want to watch the show that's available to you. And as you could see, look at Levi's charts. 
He the bar on the far left. So expect kind of what was thrown his way, which is that bar on the far left, was one of the toughest assignments in hockey. That lines up, by the way, with what Money Puck says. Money Puck says that expected goals against, he was the second highest goaltender in the NHL. And here, what you have from evolving hockey is his expected save percentage. His expected Fenwick save percentage was super low. Why? Why is his expected goals against high and his expected Fenwick save percentage really low? Because the Sabres, as much as they got credit for playing better in front of their goaltenders this year, that was only true of Lukanen. Levi, they stunk. They By the numbers, they absolutely stunk. By the numbers, he was expected to be one of the worst statistical goalies in the league. And what did he do? He was well above, he was above average, which by what was expected, he far surpassed expectations. Far surpassed expectations. Also, in evolving hockey, by the way, if you're interested, like goals above replacement, where was he at? Not that far off of Ukapeka Lukanen. Goals above replacement per 60. Lukanen ranked 21st in the NHL this year in goal, and Devin Levi ranked 29th. So Levi had, I think, a better season in the NHL than just his hockey reference page would look and how you might even think about how his season went. He had some big games. When he got called up, even it was only a couple of times. He had some monster games. The game that he had against, uh, was it against, oh, which one was it? Vancouver? No, I want to get this right. Um, New Jersey. I believe it was the game against New Jersey. Ah, now I'm now I'm upset. He had one of the best games any NHL goaltender had all season. I think it was that Devils game. Don't quote me on that. But there's one game that Levi had that was one of the best in the league. So he had some big games that kind of inflated his numbers, but those count. Those numbers count. Okay, so that's what the NHL level. Advanced stats show he had a better season than you might think. Beyond that, he's in Rochester most of the year. And in Rochester, I don't have the advanced numbers for Rochester for you, but I can give you what his save percentage was. His save percentage in Rochester was the second best all season. One guy was above him. It was a 28-year-old goaltender, more of a veteran player. Second best goalie in the AHL by save percentage. And he's showing it right now. Look at what he's doing. And look at these saves he's making in Rochester. It absolutely lines up with what the numbers say. He's been as good as you could possibly ask in the AHL. So what do I have? I have a 22-year-old goaltender that in 90%, 95% of circumstances isn't even asked to play in the NHL in the first place that has good numbers in the NHL and elite numbers in the AHL at 22. I dare you go find me another top goalie prospect in the NHL. Go find me another goalie in his age bracket or draft class that had a better season than he did. I guarantee you're not going to find it. Take that as a challenge, by the way. I haven't looked at all of them, but I've looked at a lot of them. I looked at every single goalie that was in his draft class in 2020. And he was, remember, almost one of the last picks of the draft. I looked at almost every goalie that's his age that appeared in the NHL this year. No one was better than him in the AHL, so you can't use that. Go look at Dustin Wolf. He was worse. Go look at Yaroslav Askarov, who was a first-round pick in Levi's draft class. He was good in the AHL this year. Didn't play in the NHL, by the way. But he was not as good in the AHL. He was fine. He was good. But Levi was elite. There's no goalie his age in the world, I would argue, given the level of competition that had a better season than he did. So why am I not to think he's not still special? Why am I not to think he could still be not just a starting goalie, one of the best starting goalies in the NHL? Because in most circumstances, your age 22 season, if you do this, you're on track. You're, if your goaltender is expected to be one of the best in hockey, and at age 22, his first full season of professional hockey, he has good numbers in the NHL, and he has elite numbers in the AHL. I still think that guy's going to be a star. So that's not where I'm at with Levi. Looking at the whole scope of his season, seeing this game he had last night against the Amherst, and doing a deeper dive for me because of it, I am. Very comfortable in thinking this guy, as good as Lukanen was, 
Levi's going to be their number one goalie one day. And that's no criticism of Lukanen. I think Lukanen's also going to be a number one goalie in the NHL. But I think Levi's going to be a better one. Because I don't know how many goalies are going to be better than Devin Levi. If you ask me to guess right now where he's going to end up. Long way to go. You got to do it at the NHL level for a full season before you can really start to have assurances for those type of expectations. But all the signs building up from amazing in the world juniors to the best college season we've ever seen to the second best goalie in the AHL this year to good at the NHL level in his first NHL pro season. All of that to me at 22 adds up to this guy's on track to be one of the best goalies in hockey. Not everyone gets to the end of the tracks, but he's on track. I'm real excited. That game last night was amazing by him. And I do think he outranks, in my mind, for the long term, he currently outranks Uka Pekalukinen. Now, what does that mean for UPL? I'll get to that when we come back. Don't take that to mean I don't think Lukanen should be their starting goalie next season because I definitely do. I think Lukanen still sh- should still be the guy. For me, the bigger question, though, is not about next year. It's about Lukanen's contract. And I want to fold Levi into that conversation when we come back because UPL is up and they got to figure out what to do on that deal this summer. We'll talk about that when we come back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. We are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. It is winner take all season. We are in the playoffs for hockey and basketball. You've got a massive game seven tomorrow night in Boston. Winner goes on. The loser goes home. You've got game sevens coming up in the NBA as well. And FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get 100 $50 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast, I am fired up. Siggy Jody Biasi here on the show. I'm fired up about Devin Levi Elite numbers in the AHL, good numbers, to good to great. Depending on where you look, sometimes you'll even get great for Devin Levi this season in the NHL. So, with all this being said, with Levi and his potential in mind, what does that mean for Lukanen? Lukanen's their guy. Lindy even said it at the press conference. Three letters. He got asked who your goaltender is, kiddingly, by Paul Hamilton, because Lindy never tells you who his goalie is. And what did Lindy say at the press conference? Three letters, UPL. So, no doubt about it. That dude's opening their season next year as the starter. He earned that tenfold last year to be the opening night starter next season. But Levi's going to be here. Levi's going to be in the NHL. And the comparison you're going to hear a lot of this summer, which I do think is a good one to point to as a mold, or as a, not a mold, as uh, as a blueprint, is Boston with Lena Allmark and Jeremy Swayman, where Allmark in this circumstance would be Lukanen, right? A little bit older, still a young goalie who showed some promise in the NHL before. Um, and he's going to be the veteran, but still youngish, number one guy on a respectable contract. And then you have behind him, Jeremy Swayman, super young goalie, stud in, in college, that's working his way up, and he's going to kind of start off as the 1B or the uh, the, the 2B, whatever you want to call it, uh, behind the veteran. That's what Swayman did. And while last year in Boston, Allmark was winning the Vesna and starting 48 games, you look at Jeremy Swayman, and while Allmark was winning the Vesna, Swayman was also a top five goaltender in his own right and started 33 games. So I like that. I like that as a blueprint for the Sabres, where Lukanen is their Allmark and Levi is their Swayman. Well, look what's happened in Boston this year. Allmark was the best goalie in hockey last year. And then this year, saw some regression from the best in hockey to, you know, really good. And Swayman has kind of overtaken him. This year, it kind of went back to 50-50, if not even the slight edge, to Swayman. And now you have Swayman playing in the playoffs. Swayman has played five of the six playoff games so far. 
Uh, actually, wait, that might not be that might not be right. I think he's maybe played all of the playoff games this year. Let me double check that for you. I know he's played five games in this series at a minimum. Uh, yeah, it's five. He, so Allmark got one game in. Swayman's had five. So here they are at the end of the season. Who's their number one goaltender? It's Jeremy Swayman. Swayman played forty, started forty three games this year, while Allmark started thirty nine. But Boston's in good shape. Because look at the contract they gave Allmark. They didn't give him a seven-year deal. They didn't give him an eight-year deal. They gave him a four-year deal, which allowed the exact perfect amount of time for Jeremy Swayman to go from elite college goalie prospect to, okay, we're good with him now being the number one goaltender and one of the better number one goaltenders. So now, next year, final year of Allmark's contract, kind of a perfect setup. They don't have to pay all mark big money long term and then have to figure out where to trade him and if someone wants the contract whatever they don't have to deal with that they could trade him at this upcoming deadline for a bunch of assets if they want that's the blueprint that's what i would like the sabers to do what that means to me is this summer don't sign lukanen to a seven or eight year deal don't do it because levi's on his way he's going to be a number one and maybe a star number one goalie. Don't lock yourself into Lucan in at big money for seven or eight years. You don't have to do it. He's only had one great season. He didn't even have a great season in the AHL before that. This is the first great season he had since the OHL. You don't have to pay him eight years. Go for the bridge deal is rarer and rarer in today's NHL. But if there was ever a time to unleash it, it would be now. You offer him three years or four years, and you don't go any higher than that. You give him even the money that he might want. If he says, I want I want an eight-year deal at $5 million per, I'll say to him, if I'm Kevin Adams, well, I'll meet you at the money, but we're cutting that term in half. We're doing four years at $20 million, or more ideally, you're doing three years at $20 million. Because then what that allows you to do, if it's three years, I believe, don't quote me on this because I actually don't know, but I think Lukanen would then be a restricted free agent at the end of a three-year deal. So you would hold on to contract rights and you hold on to the asset. What that would allow is a couple of years, Lukanen's your number one, you're perfectly comfortable with him, and then in the meantime, you give Levi time to get his feet wet. He doesn't have to be the number one. He doesn't have all that pressure on him to take over the net and not have a couple of weeks where he struggles because you've got Lukanen. And you could go 1-2, you could go 1-A, 1-B, and have a great young goalie tandem for the next three years. And at the end of those three years, if Levi's turned into the player that I'm talking about, that I think he's going to become, which is a star-level goaltender, well, now I don't have to commit over $10 million to goaltending. Because in my mind, Levi is going to be a superstar goaltender. And if I got Lucan in at $5 million and then I want to pay Levi like what? Eight, nine. If he gets that good, I don't want to pay that much to goalie. So Lucan in three year deal. And I think a, I want to say the bigger reason that I would like to go. If I were the Sabres, I think shorter term is smarter. Isn't even because that he's only done it for one year. I think that's a point you can make. But I think the more important point about why you go shorter with Lukanen is because the kid behind him is coming and he's going to take that job someday. He is going to take that job. I think the potential is just too high. If you look at the development tracks, Lukanen didn't have any signs that this was about to happen. Didn't play well in the NHL or the AHL before he had this year. Levi, just imagine where his ceiling is, given that every step of the way he is performing and most times performing at an elite level. So three-year deal for Lukanen is what I'm thinking, and Levi is the key reason why. So I'm excited. I can't wait to see him next year. I'm thinking, like, we'll talk more about this this offseason, but maybe something like 47, 40, let's say 48 starts for Lukanen next year and 34 starts for Devin Levi. That's about the split that I have in my head right now. So we'll see what they end up doing. we got a long ways to go. Uh, but there's no doubt that Lucan and Levi are going to be their goalies next year. Zero, zero chance it's anything else other than UPL and Levi. 
All right, it's going to do it for us. Goalie episode. We'll see if the Amherst can push it to a game five. Um, they That would be back in Rochester. Game four is in Syracuse. They're going to have to play 10 times better than they did last night. Uh, we'll see if we get that. They play tomorrow, Saturday night, 7 o'clock at Syracuse. You know, if you're looking for something to do. Weather's going to be pretty nice, so outside's a good option. But if you're looking for something inside for any reason, take a, take a quick drive out to Syracuse. Go to the uh, the Crunch and the Amherst game. And then hopefully we get next Friday, Rochester Elimination Game 5. That would be pretty sweet. Thanks for listening today to the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your thoughts are always welcome on Levi here and Lukanen. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit, up, hit us up on our text line. If you're not already a member, you can do that by going to joinsubtext.com slash Lockdown Sabres to sign up and then text us from there. Thanks for listening here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.